Hey, it's Michael from Mark Smarter. Today I want to talk about recent changes in Revit 2025, particularly around Revit automation and macros. And I also want to share an exciting opportunity for those of you looking to dive deeper into Revit programming. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the recent release of Revit 2025 brought about a lot of changes specific to Revit Automation. The most significant change was the switch to .NET 8, which is a much faster and more modern framework than the previous version, which was .NET Framework 4.8. But there's more. Revit 2025 also introduced a completely different macro environment, which unfortunately isn't for the better. Now, I have a long history with Revit macros, starting back to 2013. In fact, that's how I got started with Revit programming. Now, back then, Dynamo was in its infancy, and it wasn't that stable or robust. Now, as somebody interested in automating Revit, my options were to hack the journal file, which I really didn't want to do, uh, learn to write macros, or dive into the deep end and figure out how to program add-ins. Now, I'm an architect, I'm not a programmer, and I found that starting with macros to be much more approachable. Sharp Develop, which was the built-in development environment, connected me directly to the Revit API without needing to download any or install any extra software. So that's the road, the, that's the road that I chose. Now, I started writing my first macros, and I soon after that released the ArcSmarter Toolbox. And this is a collection of time-saving Revit macros uh, that I created and that are available for free through ArcSmarter. Now, this continued for several years until I finally moved on to creating add-ins using Visual Studio. Now, back to Revit 2025. So the changes to Revit's macro environment are twofold. So first, Sharp Develop has been removed and there's no longer a built-in IDE or integrated development environment inside of Revit, which is really unfortunate. Now I'm going to switch over to Revit 2024 and I'm going to show you what that looks like in 2024. So, and this is actually for earlier versions of Revit as well. So I'm in 2024, I'm going to go to the Manage ribbon and then I'm going to click on this icon here to the Macro Manager. And in Macro Manager, you can see I have two tabs here. One says Application, and then the other one matches the name of my file right here. So when I click on that, I have all of these macros that are embedded in my RVT file. So if I want to edit one, I can click on the macro, and then I click Edit. And this is going to launch Sharp Develop. So from here, once this pops up, I can go ahead and I can edit my code, I can add my code, I can revise it, and then when I'm done, I go up here to build, build my solution. Once I do that, I can switch back into Revit here, and I can click Run to run my macro. It's nice and easy, and it's all built in to Revit. So if I switch to Revit 2025, and I go to Manage Macro Manager, this pops up. You'll see I don't have those tabs for the application or for my document macros. So if I want to go ahead and create a macro, I'm going to go and click create new module. I'll give it a name, my module. You can see too, I, I don't have an option to choose the language. It's going to default to C sharp. So when I do this, what Revit is going to do once I create my module is it's going to open up Visual Studio Code. Now Visual Studio Code is a standalone, oh, let me click on that, here we go, is a standalone uh, IDE, Integrated Development Environment. So if I didn't have Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code installed, it would prompt me to download it. I'm going to go ahead here, trust the author. So I don't no longer have that built-in uh, development environment. I actually have to download it and it's separate. Now, the second big change is that Revit 2025 got rid of the document level macro. So let me switch back into Revit 2024. And again, I'm going to go to Macro Manager. And you can see, again, I have these two tabs, Application and Document. And so all of these macro files are embedded into this RVT file. And it makes them really easy to share. So if I want to share and distribute my macros, I can just hand out this RVT file. In fact, that's what I did with the uh, ArcSmarter toolbox. It was an RVT file you could download that contained all of these macros. So back in Revit 2025, there is no document 
macro. All I have are what are called application macros. Now, application macros are saved to your Revit profile. So if I wanted to share those, I would actually need to give the source code to somebody else. Uh, they would have to put it in a certain folder location. They would need to download uh, Visual Studio Code, build the code, and go from there. So it really is a lot more complicated, a lot more steps to share. So to summarize, Revit 2025 got rid of Sharp Develop and it got rid of the document level macro. So going back to my original question, are Revit macros dead? Sadly, I have to say yes, Revit macros are dead. The two best things about macros, one, not needing any additional software to get started, and two, being able to easily share macros are gone. And those were really the two things that drew me to macros originally. So now there's a lot more friction, there's a lot more steps, you know, there's a lot more in the way to get started, which is a real shame. So rest in peace Revit macros, it was a good run. Now, if you're interested in coding beyond Dynamo, skip macros entirely and just start programming Revit add-ins. And if you want to learn how to program Revit add-ins quickly and easily, check out my Revit add-in bootcamp. The Revit add-in bootcamp is an online program designed for architects, engineers, construction professionals who want to create custom Revit tools to streamline workflows and increase productivity. Whether you're a beginner or you have some programming experience, this course is going to guide you through step-by-step -step how to create powerful Revit add-ins. You'll learn how to set up your development environment, how to use time-saving templates, how to make sense of C-sharp and the Revit API, and then how to build real-world add-ins that you can apply directly to your work. As a student, you're going to benefit from expert instruction, hands-on learning, a community of supportive classmates and mentors, as well as some custom tools and templates that are going to save you a whole lot of time and frustration. But don't just take my word for it. Here's what some past students have had to say about the Revit add-in bootcamp. So if you're ready to unlock Revit's full potential, join the Revit add-in bootcamp and start creating custom tools that are gonna save you a ton of time and improve your productivity immensely. Head over to the link in the description to learn more and to sign up. Can't wait to see what you're gonna build.